Hey guys, what's up? It's Eiffel here, and because I think Warframe is in a spot which isn't going to change anytime soon, I thought it was about time I made the ultimate Warframe beginner's guide. This guide is going to show anyone who watches the full series everything they need to know about Warframe and show them how to get to the point where they will pretty much one-shot everything in the game and have a lot of knowledge on all the Warframes and their powers, as well as how to get pretty much everything in the game for free. But before we jump into the guide, let me answer the most frequently asked question that I get asked by everyone who has never played Warframe. That question being, is Warframe pay to win? And to that question, I would say, no, everything in this game can be obtained without purchasing platinum. However, there are a few exceptions to this rule, such as buying cosmetics or paying to progress a little bit faster. But without further ado, let's get right into the guide. So once you open up Warframe and sit through some of the short cinematics, you'll be introduced with the choice of three different Warframes. These Warframes are known as Excalibur, Mag, and Vault. Each frame has different statistics and abilities of which I'll give you a short rundown of. First, we're going to talk about Excalibur. Excalibur is described as a Jack of All Trades Warframe and is usually considered to be the best choice out of all of the starter Warframes. He has a good mix of balanced stats, offensive, and defensive abilities. Excalibur's first ability slash dash propels the player forward cutting down at any enemy that stands in his or her path. This ability can be used to deal damage or to get around maps faster. Excalibur's second ability is known as Radio Blind, where Excalibur raises his sword and lets out an intense flash of light which stuns all enemies within a particular radius and opens them up to melee finishers which deal massive damage. Excalibur's third ability is Radial Javelin, which propels energy swords towards the enemies around Excalibur, deals damage and will pin them to walls if they die. Excalibur's ultimate or fourth ability is called Exalted Blade, where Excalibur brings out a blade of light that he can use as a melee weapon which emits light waves that deal damage when the sword is swung. This ability will take stats from the player's equipped melee weapon mods, so it requires you to have a little knowledge on melee weapon modding that we're going to cover in this guide. Next up, we're going to talk about Mag. Mag is considered the worst choice for a starter Warframe, not just because of her somewhat complicated ability kit, but also because of how early and easily you can get her. Mag's first ability is known as Pull. This ability allows the player to ragdoll any enemies that they're looking at towards them while dealing a small amount of damage. Mag's second ability is called Magnetize. This allows the player to put a massive bubble around the target which will suck in any of her enemies, enemy bullets or resources that are near the center of the actual bubble. Once the duration of the bubble runs out, the bubble will explode, multiplying the damage that was actually dealt to the bubble when it was active. Mag's third ability is called Polarize. This ability will expand over time after being cast and strips armor and shields from any enemy that it sweeps over, making them an easy kill. It also restores friendly shields that are caught in the ability. Mag's ultimate and fourth ability is called Crush, where Mag will stand still, pick up all surrounding enemies and deal massive amounts of damage to them, most likely killing them in the process. If they are not killed, they will be dropped and staggered for a short period of time. Last but not least, we have Vault. Volt is a decent starter frame choice, he has alright stats and his kit is mainly based around crowd control and utility. Volt's first ability is known as Shock, this ability will simply stun the enemy you use it on, dealing a small amount of damage. Volt's second ability is known as Speed, this ability will speed up your movement, melee and reload speed. Volt's third ability is known as Electric Shield, this is a shield which you can place down and pick up that will reflect all incoming damage but will also amplify your damage when you shoot through it. Volt's ultimate ability is known as Discharge. This ability will make Volt jump in the air and let out a burst of electricity which will stun all surrounding enemies for a certain period of time, while also dealing damage. For the sake of this guy, we are going to be starting off with Excalibur, not because of his stats or abilities, but simply because the other two frames are really easy to get later on. However, if you're looking for a more engaging experience, I recommend choosing Vault, simply because if you're a player who's willing to invest the time into learning how the modding section works and figuring out what works for their frames without following a guide, Vault will yield more rewarding and funner results than Excalibur. We will be obtaining Vault later on in this guide, and I'll be speaking about him in detail later on in this guide, but it's not going to be upfront. Like I said, he's a very easy to obtain frame. If you want more information on the frames covered in this video, you can check out the links in the video description or check out the Warframe builds playlist that I'll put in the card that should appear in the top right hand corner of your screen right now. But if you're not too bothered right now and you'd rather learn about them in this guide later, pick a Scalibur and continue watching the video. Once you've selected the frame, you'll be thrown straight into the prologue where you'll have to make three different choices. These choices are nothing major, just beginning weapon choices. You can make your own decisions here, however, I will recommend what I believe to be the best choices. 
For your first choice, your melee weapon, I recommend choosing the Scanna. The reason for this being is later on in the game, you would have to build the Scanna and you can straight up buy the MK1 bow. So the MK1 bow is really easy to obtain after the prologue, where the Scanna is just a little bit harder. That and the Scanna is overall just a little bit better. Next up is your secondary weapon. This one really doesn't matter too much, so you can choose whatever you like. However, they both are equally as good or bad and can be easily obtained later on. Last but not least is your choice of primary weapon. Again, this choice doesn't matter too much, but I like choosing the bow as it's a little bit better versus armored units. Those are the ones with the yellow health. After you've completed the prologue, you get thrown into your ship to complete the Vor's prize quest. This quest will introduce you to a few of the game modes within Warframe. Most are self-explanatory, but I'll go through them just in case you find some of them not as straightforward as others. Another tip as we're moving forward, between missions a lot of dialogue will be happening. If you want to, just jump straight into the gameplay. There's a little dialogue skip trick that you can do as they introduced a new Captura mode into the game not that long ago. You can go into it and take pictures of yourself. The trick is whenever the dialogue is happening, you go to your arsenal, once you have the arsenal segment installed, uh, you hover over your Warframe, press the Appearance tab, and then click the Captura button in the bottom right hand corner. You're going to enter into this Captura mode, pause the game and then exit back to your ship and then the dialogue will be skipped. You can do that for pretty much any quest in the game, however if you're required to build something in the quest like you are in this quest, you'll have to actually build it and then listen to the dialogue that comes after you build that said item and then just let it pan out. So you can do it for pretty much every single dialogue apart from the ones where you have to actually meet a requirement such as building something in your ship. However, I would recommend that if this is your first time playing and you're the slightest bit interested in the lore of this game, don't bother skipping any of the dialogue because there are little bits and pieces here and there which are really kind of interesting. The first mission that you guys will come across is known as a spy mission. This mission will usually consist of the player having to open up three data vaults undetected, so to a degree it's a stealth mission, however you only have to be super sneaky when you actually enter one of the data vault rooms. Which means you can basically sprint through the mission, allowing the enemies to see you while setting off all the alarms and all that jazz, and only taking your time and working your way around things once you enter one of the vaults. It's also worth mentioning that, that if you chose the MK1 Paris or the MK1 Kunai during the prologue, that these will not make any noise, meaning that you can stealth kill enemies at a range, minimizing the risk of triggering alarms. Within these vaults are usually enemies, lasers, and cameras that will detect you and set off an alarm. This alarm will trigger a timer that will destroy the data and reward you're trying to receive once the timer hits zero. Luckily for you, the first spy mission is extremely easy and only requires you to infiltrate one spy vault. Next up is a rescue mission. This mission requires you to save a hostage from being captive by a particular faction. Much like in the spy mission that you just played, every single enemy faction will have different data vaults and rescue missions. You will learn your way around these vaults and rescue missions with experience. Every single one of them have a very easy way of getting in and out undetected. All you have to do to release the hostage is hack the console that is beside the GL cell which the hostage will be in, but be careful if you get detected when entering the holding cell, a timer will go off and the hostage will be executed when it hits zero resulting in a mission field. Once you successfully find the hostage, just get to the exit as fast as possible and do not give the hostage a weapon as all he will try to do is fight the enemies and most likely go into the down state, holding you back. Our third mission is a variation of an exterminate mission which is usually really straightforward. You go in, you kill a certain number of enemies and then you get out. Except in this one you have to go in and pick up an item, it's really simple. Next up we have a salvage mission. This mission isn't usually a mission that appears in the star chart, rather just a quest specific mission. So just go in, get the resources in the mission and then get out. Once that is done, go and find a nav segment to find out where Captain War is hiding so we can kill him and break the link. This mission is a super easy go here get this mission with a choice at the end that has no impact on the game at all so just head straight to the exit instead of wasting your time. After we have the nav segment we can go ahead and kill Vor to complete the quest. The Vor fight is extremely easy as long as you stay well away from the traps that Vor puts down and aim for the head. After shooting Vor a few times he will enter into a form of invulnerability where he will put down a large yellow bubble around himself and spawn in a group of enemies. Kill these enemies, then rinse and repeat the process until Vor dies, then the Vor fight will be completed. Once you extract and get back to the ship, the Lotus will go through some dialogue and then the quest completed screen should show up. This will be your first ever Warframe quest completed. From this point onwards, you're going to be on your own in the Warframe universe. No tutorials, no direction. You're left to figure everything out for yourself and that's where this guide is going to come into play. 
From this point onward, it's up to you to begin progressing through the star chart by doing the missions that flash blue when you enter the navigation. When a mission node is flashing blue, it's indicating that you've never completed that mission before and you can still earn Master Rank XP from it. This is something that we're going to be talking about in a later episode. It is also worth mentioning that at the start of the game, you will receive 50 of the premium currency known as Platinum for free. Platinum is Warframe's premium currency that you can purchase for IRL money or can trade for it by trading rare in-game items with other players in the trade chat or on a site known as Warframe.market. The reason that this premium currency is important is because if you want to have more than two Warframes and a few weapons, you are going to need Platinum to purchase what is known as Warframe and Weapon slots. You can view these slots by heading over to the market and typing slots in the search bar located in the top left hand corner. Newer players usually find it harder than developed players to make platinum early on as they have very little assets to sell for high prices such as prime items or rare mods. So what most players recommend is that you begin crafting weapons that are not so good earlier on in the game so you can level them up to level 30 which will give the player mastery rank XP and sell them once they have hit max level and replacing it with a different one. With your starter platinum, I recommend purchasing two Warframe slots as we will be obtaining very powerful Warframes very early on that will allow us to efficiently farm items that higher level players might be looking to purchase. As a newer player, it is important to stay on top of everything that you collect in the game. The most important early on is your mods, as you can dissolve your duplicate mods into a resource known as Endo, which is needed for upgrading better mods later on in the game that will increase your stats. Leveling up will only slightly increase the stats of your Warframes, however it is not the same for your weapons as they don't get stats increased at all. If you enjoyed the first ever episode of my Warframe Ultimate Beginner's Guide, make sure to hit that like button to share it with your friends and subscribe. If you have any questions that you'd like answered, you can get in contact with me by following any of my social media, joining my public discord, or talking to me during one of my daily live streams that are usually between 9am and 2pm GMT. Thank you guys for watching this video and I'll see you guys next time.